Okay, so first of all, I want to have eight sections. So I'm going to put numbers in here going from one to eight. Then I want all of my sections to be the same size. So I'm going to make them all 45 degrees. And I'm going to copy this number all the way down. Then while I still have these values selected, I'm going to go to insert and I will insert a pie chart. Then I'll delete the chart title and the legend and we'll change the size of this chart. So I'll change it to be eight centimeters by eight centimeters. Then we'll double click on this chart to open up the formatting bar. And I will select the pie chart and then go to series options and change the angle of the first slice to be 22.5 degrees. Then we'll format this, so I will change the border to be black. Then I'll decrease the width. Then I'll select just the first slice and I'll change the color of this to be blue. And then I can select this slice here and use the keyboard shortcut F4. And this keyboard shortcut repeats whatever you just did, which in my case is change the color to blue. Then I can select this slice here and change it to yellow. And then I can use the keyboard shortcut F4 again to change the remaining slices to yellow. Then this chart still has a gray border around the outside, so I'm going to get rid of that by changing it to no line. Then I want to add in data labels. And I'll select the data labels and change them to show the category name and remove the value and the leader lines. Then we'll format these. So I will change them to have a black font and to be Arial. And I'll make them bold and I'll make the font 20. Now I want to replace these numbers with wind directions. So I will right click on the chart and go to select data. And then we will edit the horizontal axes labels. And I will select these numbers here and OK and OK again. And now because we changed the angle of the first slice, this slice here is actually the first one which means north is number eight. So I need to change eight here to be N. Then we can go back up to the top and this will be the northeast and then the east and then the southeast and then south and then southwest and west and northwest. And now we have all of the directions in here. The next thing that I want to do is add labels around the outside showing the actual number of degrees. And in order to do this, I need a new chart and a new table. So we'll start with a row called degrees. And we'll start with zero. And then I need this to increase by 22.5 each time. And I'll drag this down until we get to 337.5. Then I want to change these degrees into radians. And for this, we'll just use the radians function and select the degrees and then double click to send that formula down. Then I want to put in the X values and I'm going to use sign to do this. So we'll do equals sign, then select the number of radians and then double click to send that formula down. Then I want to have Y values in here and for this I'm going to use cos. So I'll do equals cos and then select the radians again and then double click to send that formula down. Then I'll select all of the X and Y values and go to insert and insert a scatter chart with lines. Then I'll delete the chart title and also delete the grid lines. 
Then we'll change the size of this chart. So I'll make it 8.5 centimeters by 8.5 centimeters. Then I want to change the axes maximum and minimum to remove the gaps around the edges. So I'll change the minimum to minus 1.15 and change the maximum to 1.15. And I'll do the same thing for the horizontal axes. So this becomes minus 1.15 and this becomes 1.15. Now that I've adjusted the axes, I can delete these as I don't actually want to be able to see them. And now I'm going to add in data labels. And we will change these data labels here to be value from cells and I'll select all of the degrees and OK. Then I'll remove the Y values and the leader lines and put the labels in the center. And then I'll give the labels a fill so we can actually see the numbers. And at the moment I have lines all the way around the edge of the circle. But what I actually want is lines going all the way across the circle, which means I have to change the order of the rows in this table. And to make it easier to see, I'm going to make all of the smaller numbers one color and make all of the bigger numbers a different color. Now, the first line I want is going from 0 to 180, which means I need to take the 180 row here and hold down shift and then drag this row up so it comes just under the 100 row. And now I have a line joining these two numbers together. Then I want a line going from 180 to 202.5. So I need to take this row here and move it upwards so it's just underneath 180. Now I have a line going from 202.5 to 22.5. And I also have a line going from 22.5 to 45, which is what I want. Next, I want a line going from 45 to 225, which means I need to take this row here and move it upwards. And I'm also going to take the row just underneath it as well and move these upwards so they're just under 45. And if you follow the pattern all the way around or all the way down, you'll see we need a pattern of two smaller numbers followed by two bigger numbers. So I'm going to select these two numbers here and move them upwards to here, and then select these two numbers here and move them upwards to here. And now you can see we have lines going all the way across the circle. Now I'm going to delete the data labels and we'll format this line. So I'll change it to be black, and I'll also make the width smaller. Then I'll go to markers and change this to none. Then we'll go back to the line and I'll select just this part of the line here and change it to no line. And then I'll select this part here and use the keyboard shortcut F4 to do the same thing. And I'll go all the way around the outside and get rid of all of these straight lines by pressing F4 over and over again. Now this chart here still has a gray border around the outside, so I'll get rid of that. And now I want to combine these two charts together. So I'll take my pie chart and I will bring it to the front and I need to get rid of the background color, so I'll change this to no fill. Then I can press Control A to select both of these charts and go to Shape Format and Align and Align Center and then Align and Align Middle. And now I have these two charts combined together. If you look really closely at this chart, you'll see that the lines from the scatter chart don't perfectly line up with the edges of the slices of the pie chart. And this is because if I click on the pie chart again, you can see that the angle of the first slice is 22 degrees, when really I want it to be 22.5 degrees, but you can only have whole numbers in this box. In order to fix this, I'm going to change the number here to be minus 0.5. And because the rest of this table is made up of formulas, which all link back to this cell, 
everything in the table changes. And now the lines from the scatter chart and the slices of the pie chart do actually line up with each other. Of course, this does mean that the wind direction diagram is slightly wrong. It's off by 0.5 degrees. But I think that this doesn't really matter because it's so small and you can't tell just by looking at it. And also, there's not any other way of doing this. The angle of the first slice has to be a whole number. Now that I've set this up, I want to put in my numbers going all the way around the outside, showing the number of degrees. So I'm going to move these charts out of the way, and then we'll add in a few more columns. So I'm going to have labels here, and then we'll have X values and Y values. And the labels are going to be this number here plus 0.5 because I still want the labels to have the correct number. Then for the x values, I'm going to take this value here and multiply it by 1.15. And in this way, we're going to create a new circle with a larger radius than the previous one. Because I don't want the data labels to overlap with the ends of the lines, I want for them to be slightly away from the edge of the lines. And in order to do that, I need to create a new series. So I'll right click on the chart and go to select data. Then I'll add in a new series. And the name of this series will be labels. Then all of the X values will be these values here. And all of the Y values will be these values here. And OK. And OK again. Now I'm going to select this new series and I'll change the line to no line. Then I'll select the data labels and I'll change the labels to show values from cells. And those values will be all of the labels in this column and OK. Then I'll get rid of the Y values and the leader lines and change the label position to be in the center. Then we'll format the text, so I'll change it to black and make the font Arial. Then I will change the size to be 10.5. Now I can combine these two charts back together again. So I'll hold down Control to select both of them and then go to Shape Format and Align and Align Center and then Align Middle. And while I still have both of these selected, I can group them together. And now I can move this as if it were one shape. OK, so in this video, I have shown you how to make a wind direction diagram in Excel. And that is everything.